In these clips, we see both 40mm Bofors and 20mm Orlikens in action. These were the premium U.S. Navy ship-based anti-aircraft guns in World War II. At first fleet introduction, these guns used their iron ring sights and tracers for target sighting. Later in the war, the guns were fitted with a Mark 14 gyroscopic computing gun sight. However, gunners would still need to sight targets with iron sights if the computing gun sights failed. The intent of this video is to review the gun's ballistics, the three parameters needed to use a sight in correcting for target lead, and how they worked with the gun's tracers in getting enemy aircraft strikes. This video dovetails nicely with the channel's last two videos deep diving the operation of the 20mm Orlikens and the 40mm Bofors autocannons. This chart from a 1944 naval gunnery document outlines geometry ballistics of ship-based anti-aircraft fire. The 20mm gun is located here. The enemy aircraft is flying here in this direction. The distance from the gun to the target is a slant range. The gunner will need to estimate its future position during the projectile's time of flight such that the plane and projectile stream meet here in three-dimensional space. To get the projectiles to strike the plane at this point, he will need to lead the plane's initial position by this angle. The gun's lead can be estimated by using an iron ring sight, tracers, and or the Mark 14 gun sight. This is an example of an iron ring sight on a 40mm gun and the Mark 14 gun sight on a 20mm gun. We will focus on iron ring sights in this video and address usage and performance of the Mark 14 computing gun sight in a future video. To account for the correct lead, the gunner will need to know three parameters, the type of aircraft, its speed, and its range from a 1945 naval gunnery document. These three values will be required to aim the guns with a proper lead to obtain a projectile strike or a stream of strikes. Let's first address how the gunner gets these three parameters. Recognition is needed so you don't attack a friendly plane and its type can be used to estimate both its approach angle and speed. Gunners will have been trained to identify the type of attacking aircraft by studying recognition charts like this one. Speed is estimated based on the type of aircraft. Unless experienced, don't estimate an attacking plane speed based on its noise or making a guess. Assume a plane is at its maximum speed while attacking. If no reliable data is available, assume fighters and dive bombers are at 300 knots, low-level bombers 250 knots, and torpedo attackers at 200 knots. If no range instruments are available, a skilled gunner can estimate the range by your Mark I eyeball. Range estimation is based on practice and experience. While practicing, use the AA range indicator instrument to gain experience. This is an example of a range indicator instrument. The face of the instrument is divided into quadrants based on the wingspan of the plane from 35, 45, 60, 75, and 90 feet. Hold the indicator 24 inches from your face and rotate the dial such that the plane is framed by the two vertical wires. Read off the detent tab in the zone corresponding to the plane's wingspan. For example, we can estimate the distance of a valve dive bomber. Its wingspan is 47 feet. After framing its wingspan with the vertical lines, we can read off the distance from the indicator's 45-foot quadrant at 750 yards, as the tab is between 500 and 1,000 yards. This image shows Navy gunners practice using the AA range indicator. The instruments are at a fixed distance of 24 inches from the gunner's eye by a lanyard. The gunner cannot use this instrument in combat. He must rely on his eye for range estimation. This image shows a 40mm Bofors ring sight and post from a 1943 40mm anti-aircraft gun material document. The Bofors ring sight and post provide a simple, quick way to account for the correct target lead. The sight system should be used if the gun is not controlled by a director. The sight has one, two, three, four concentric rings. Each ring will be assigned a speed. It also has 12 radial spider wires which hold the speed rings into position and aid in projecting the attacking plane to the sight center. The gunner will memorize the values in this table. This portion of the table is valid for a plane at a range of 1,000 yards and this table for 3,500 yards. For example, you have identified this plane as a Japanese Zero fighter. Its speed is therefore 300 knots and you have eyeball estimated its range at 3,500 yards. Based on this range and speed, the proper lead is met when the plane is on the site's fourth or outer ring. To use the ring sight, start by drawing an imaginary projected line forward from the plane. Traverse and elevate the gun sight such that the imaginary line crosses the center of the ring. Traverse and elevate the gun sight again such that the plane's center of mass lies along the fourth outer 300 knot ring. You can open fire now. 
As long as the range is 3,500 yards, keep the plane's center of mass on the fourth ring and its projected line through the center of the ring sight while you are continually tracking and firing at the fighter. If the range is 1,000 yards, the plane's center of mass aim point will be along the third ring sight. As the plane's range changes from 3,500 to 1,000 yards, the gunner will need to interpolate between rings 3 and 4, but always point the plane at the center of the ring. If the fighter is approaching head-on, then just align the fighter with the center of the ring sight. No need to lead. Just start firing when the plane is within the gun's effective range. This page from a 1943 anti-aircraft cartwheel gun sight document outlines speed value corrections for angle off plane approaches. If the plane is flying directly at the gun, like in this view, where the approach angle is zero degrees, then no lead is required. Don't lead the target with the gun sight speed rings. If the plane is flying across the gun's line of sight, like in this view, at an approach angle of 90 degrees, then full lead is required at the plane's maximum speed. Use the speed ring defined at full speed minus 50 knots for a plane at a 60 degree approach angle. The speed ring defined at half full speed for a plane at a 30 degree approach angle. And the speed ring defined at one fourth full speed for an airplane at a 15 degree approach angle. This image shows a JU-52 at a 60 degree approach angle. As you can see, it can get quite messy as these mental calculations have to occur quickly under combat conditions and continually interpolate on range and approach angle as the plane moves in three-dimensional space. This can be made more difficult when you have two gunners trying to lead the target, like the Bofors training gunner adjusting the gun's azimuth while the pointer gunner adjusts the gun's elevation. Both gunners need to estimate the same aircraft target, its type, approach angle, range, speed, and direction to place its center of mass at the proper speed ring location. This is why most gunners just sighted the target with tracers or sighted with the Mark 14 gun sight if available. Let's calculate the actual lead angle needed to strike a plane traveling at 300 knots at a 90 degree approach angle at a range of 3,500 yards from a 40 millimeter Bofors twin gun mount. This page represents the ballistic trajectory of the Bofors 40 millimeter projectile from a 1945 War Department document. The projectile's time of flight to travel 3,500 yards is 6 seconds. The zero is traveling at a speed of 300 knots or 506 feet per second. The zero will have traversed 3,036 feet during the projectile's 6 second time of flight. The gunner will need to lead the zero by around 16 degrees projected along the plane's direction of flight. The 20 mm ring sight is shown on this image from a 1943 20 mm gun document. Ring speeds of 100, 200, and 300 knots are accounted for at a 750 yard range. The maximum effective range of the 20 mm guns is 1200 yards if the target is sighted by a ring sight and or tracers, and 1700 yards if the target is sighted by the Mark 14 gun sight. Prior to the Mark 14 gun sight, the 20mm gun's primary target sighting was with tracers, where the gun's ring sight was used to position the gun, starting the tracer stream, then the gunner sights the target by tracer control. After 1941, the Mark 14 gyroscopic gun sight was used for fire control, with a spotter correcting fire by tracer observation. This is another image of the Mark 14 gun sight. The iron sights are used as a backup sighting method if the Mark 14 gun sight is inoperative and tracers are not visible. Generally, target sighting by speed ring sights is difficult to learn. Accounting for the correct lead based on the target's off-axis speed for a rapidly changing target flying in a three-dimensional environment is difficult. Tips on using the ring sights include, the plane's approach angle will increase as the target gets nearer, the lead should increase. Always err on too much lead rather than too little. It's easier to back into the target rather than to catch up. Keep the gun tracking in the target's direction. Sighting the target by tracers is easier. No speed or approach angle computations are needed. If the target is within range, just adjust the projectile stream to get strikes. Tracers are less sensitive to gun vibrations or smoke. Available data shows little difference in accuracy between target strikes by sighting an aerial target with ring sights or tracers. Less than 1% of strikes are expected for either system, at a range of 1,500 yards. This is why the Navy shifted to the Mark 14 gun sight, ASAP. If you have found this Navy 20 and 40 millimeter ring sight video interesting and informative, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.